I grew up in a small steel mill town in West Virginia. My mom had me when she was 16 years old, and my parents divorced when I was eight. My parents were both involved with drugs and alcohol, but it spiraled out of control after the divorce and after my mom severely injured herself at work. From that moment forward, my life became a string of chaos. My parents were involved in several severe car accidents, physically and verbally abusive new relationships, and suddenly there was an increased uncertainty with where I was living, with my grandparents, with my mom and her new boyfriend, with my dad, with my aunt, just to name a few. I went to therapy, counseling, Al-Anon, and read books on and off throughout my teenage years and early 20s, but I still couldn't quite shake the underpinnings of my anxiety and depression. I kept searching for somebody to fix me, or a book to tell me I'm not crazy. And at the same time, I kept pouring all of my energy into trying to fix, help, and save my mother. It was a very difficult time, and luckily, there was an unexpected moment where I went on a spontaneous trip to Vermont. I arrived at Stowe, Vermont just before midnight with a friend that I had met a couple of years ago. We decided the next day that we would go cliff jumping. <laughs> so I, the no next morning, we drove around and found a great spot. A family was taking turns jumping off of a high cliff into a cool pool of water below. I sat on the sidelines and watched as everyone took turns jumping off of the cliff. My anxiety was elevated that day, and I was not ready for the rush that cliff jumping had to offer. But my friend pestered me one too many times, so I handed him my glasses, and I stepped out to the edge of the cliff. And as I was standing there, a flood of thoughts came to me. I began to think of all the things I wanted to let go of in my life the things that I had been holding on to that I wanted to let go of. Things like my anxiety of, from my childhood, the heaviness between the relationship of me and my mother and her addiction, and the bouts of depression I had been struggling with my entire life. And as I was standing there, with these thoughts racing through my mind, the mom of the group below yelled up at me, just let go! And I jumped. And as I plunged into the cool water below, I knew in that moment I was going to be okay. I felt a surge of energy, a huge release. The next week, I returned home to New York, and I had a conversation with my mom. I told her that I would no longer be able to financially and emotionally support her any longer. I knew that she was on her own journey, and I was only holding her back from growing by constantly saving her from the trouble she so often found herself in. The next week, I went to work, and I sat down during lunch in a giant, empty conference room. And I began writing, just writing down, all of the things that were coming to me. It turned out to be 20 items, and these items were things that I wanted to be doing in my life, but currently wasn't doing. Things like eating healthier, be more spiritual, release others' expectations of me, and be outdoors more. 20 items. They fell into four distinct categories, self-love, letting go, connection, and moving forward. Five items each. So I decided in that conference room that I would dedicate myself to each of the items on the list. I would take one week per item, 20 weeks dedicated to myself, which was a stark difference from 20 years dedicated to someone else. But where would I find the time? <laughs> I decided that I would take time for myself and create space in my life by not drinking, dating, or allowing negative media into my life. So I stopped watching TV, deactivated my Facebook, drank water when I went out with my friends, and told any guy who talked to me that I wasn't dating at the moment. As you can imagine, this freed up a ton of time <laughs> in my schedule. <laughs> so I was able to read a book on the topic each week, I was able to actively do the activity, and I blogged about my insights three to five times per week. I was learning a lot. And I'd like to share with you the key learnings from each of the four topics today. Self-love. Self-care is not selfish. I realized how important it was to take time for myself. I began eating healthier. I began really listening to my body. 
And I found that I had to take time to heal a bone bruise on my knee that I had literally been ignoring for years. So I overcame my fear of needles and my skepticism, and I went to acupuncture appointments. I discovered who I was as a person, and I realized the things that I liked to do and found that sometimes the best thing to do whenever I was anxious or had no time was just to take a bath with some lavender essential oil. Letting go. Everyone has fear. Identifying my own fears and working on releasing them was the key. I was very fearful and I was terrified to let people see the real me. Whenever I first started blogging about my 20-week cleanse, I didn't use my real name. I didn't share pictures of myself. I was fearful. And the way I overcame this was I wrote whenever I felt anxious. I journaled a lot. And I worked with a mind-body coach to help me release my emotions through movement. Connection. Depression is isolating. It was imperative for me to feel like I was a part of something bigger. After the first half of the cleanse, I felt better about myself, but I didn't feel like I was connecting with others. So I began making small talk in coffee houses, which led to great friendships. I volunteered my time at a local organic farm and found a whole new worldview and met amazing people. I completed an herbal apprenticeship at an herbal farm near Ithaca and spent my weekends camping with 25 other people learning about plants. I began feeling connected to other people and also to the natural world. And I found that the best medicine for my anxiety and depression was being on the land with those supportive, caring people. Moving forward. After my 20-week cleanse, I was able to launch my business, Sustainable Happy Life. And I also hosted a women's weekend retreat on the local farm, teaching about herbals, organic farming, and the mind-body connection. And because I was able to move forward in that way, my mom actually went on her own personal journey, and she completely transformed as well. And I am happy to say that we talk regularly and have a significantly better relationship. So I would like to leave you with this. <laughs> Thanks. I would like to leave you with this. Stop going along with what the world is doing. Commit to yourself and take the time to care for yourself. The world needs inspired, happy people to set and reach meaningful goals. And it all starts with doing what you love and letting go of the things that are holding you back. You can consciously create your sustainable, happy life, and it is vital that you do. Thank you.